Sweden's third largest city, Malmö, sits just across the water from Copenhagen, Denmark. To visitors, Malmö seems quiet, nice, maybe a little boring. In other words, quintessentially Swedish. But under the surface, Malmö has serious problems. On Saturday, when Israel played Sweden in a Davis Cup tennis match in Malmö, an estimated 6,000 leftists, Arabs, Muslims, and anarchists protested the Israeli presence in the city, and many attacked police. Almost no fans were allowed inside to watch the tennis series because authorities feared disruptions or violence. Massive immigration has made Malmö today one quarter Muslim and stands to transform it into a Muslim majority city within just a few decades. One of the most popular baby names is not Sven, but Mohammed. Pork has been taken off some school menus. Want to learn to drive? Here's Malmer's own Jihad Driving School. And despite Malmer's usually placid appearance, this experiment in multiculturalism has not gone well. This is the Rosengard area of Malmer, a housing project where the radicalization and crime have exploded and fire and emergency workers will no longer enter without police protection. Immigrant unemployment in Rosengard is reported to be 70 percent. An immigrant-fueled crime wave affects one of every three Malmer families each year. The number of rapes has tripled in 20 years. And the crime wave has only accelerated a Swedish version of white flight from the city. Malmer has been so accommodating toward immigrant Muslims that a local Muslim politician and imam has even declared that the best Islamic state is Sweden. But don't ask Malmer's Jews to give the city the same glowing assessment. Jews who dare walk the streets wearing their yarmulkes risk being beaten up. And it's true. Jews cannot walk in the streets of Malmo and, and show that they're Jews. Lars Hedegaard lives across the water from Malmo in Copenhagen, where he was a columnist for one of Denmark's largest newspapers. He says peaceful pro-Israeli demonstrations in Malmo, like the ones during the Gaza war earlier this year, were met with rocks, bottles and pipe bombs from Arabs and leftists. I was there uh, for a demonstration, uh, a pro-Israeli demonstration, with about uh, four or five hundred uh, people um, Jews, non-Jews, and I came over to, to cover it. The police allowed these, uh, say, a hundred uh, Palestinians or and Arabs to shout and threaten and um, throw bombs and rockets at us. Uh, a homemade bomb landed about ten yards from me, went off with a big bang, and I thought, well, now the police, of course, is going to, uh, to jump these guys, get them out of the way. They didn't. Just let them stand there. I filmed the police chief and asked him why are they not reacting to this? Why are they not doing anything? And he simply answered, it's their right according to the Swedish constitution to be there. We apparently did not have the same right because we were forced out of their zone. Swede Ted Ekeroth helped film the Arab left counter demonstrations. He saw Arabs throwing rocks at a 90 year old Holocaust survivor. Hopefully you can show some of the clips from our manifestation for Israel, which is always peaceful and always with a message of peace. And there is always the quite opposite death, hate and killing of Jews. And like all over the Western world, Arab and Muslim immigrants, along with some leftists and anarchists, have formed a political alliance against Israel and Jews. They demonstrate together, and in Sweden, they vote together. Muslims and Arabs are a core constituency of the left. The immigrant issue is a big reason the right-wing Swedish Democrats are the fastest-growing political party in the country. Matthias Carlsson is the Swedish Democrats' press secretary. In, in many parts of Sweden, people are, as I said, fed up, and, and they're being pushed too far, and they, they want to make a stand. But the Swedish Democrats, who stand for traditional Christian values and limits on immigration, have been stigmatized by the Swedish media as fascist and bigoted. Uh, the media has tried to portray us as uh, uh, extremists, racists. We're almost inhuman. Eric Almquist, national youth leader for the Swedish Democrats, faces regular death threats and was almost killed recently in a left-wing knife attack. The multicultural system in Sweden has polarized the society. We have an uh, ethnic polarization. We have also a political polarization. Hedegaard says as Malmer goes, so goes Sweden. I think the best prediction is that Sweden will have a Muslim majority by 2049.
So we know where that country is going. CBN News was unable to get a response from Malmer's mayor, Ilmar Repolu, but he told a Swedish publication he does not think anti-Semitism is greater in Malmer than in other Swedish cities, and said that harassment of Jews is, quote, not good. CBN News asked a number of Malmer Jewish leaders to appear on camera to discuss anti-Semitism. They all declined, with one saying it would only make the situation worse. Dale Hurd, CBN News, in Malmer, Sweden.